worship the Lord, you know, they were praising him and hailing him as Hosanna. And they had no idea what was coming. That in a couple days, they would be screaming and hollering for his crucifixion. We know the end. We know the end. Let's stand and praise the Lord. If you have breath, you need to be praising the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Sing it. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you in the valley. Praise you on the mountain. I praise you when I'm sure. Praise you when I'm doubting. I praise you when I'm numbered.
you have so much more And we're looking to a new horizon We're ready for your rain to pour An overflowing of your true redemption An overflowing of your kingdom And we're ready for your
where we were praying, keep going, it was where um, right before break my heart. Thank you, guys. Um, one more. <clears throat> okay, now listen. Heal my heart and make it clean. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. We should be speaking that as our prayer. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Okay, go to the next one. Show me how to love like you have loved me. How many heard the prayer this morning whenever I was praying? And I did not know that was in there. I actually didn't know that's what they were singing. And I said, God, show us how to love. Um, for those of you that came Friday night, I don't know about you, but whew, that movie is just, we watch The Passion of the Christ, and it, it breaks me to watch what Jesus did for me. And, you know, the next line, break my heart for what breaks yours. Are you asking God to break your heart for what breaks him, his heart? Today's Palm Sunday, and I'm, I am going to get into the offering, don't worry. Um, but, you know, on this day, they were waving branches and they were shouting, Hosanna. It was a celebration as he was riding in on that donkey. But he knew what was coming next. He knew the cross was ahead of him. And the people really didn't. How can you yell Hosanna, Hosanna and just worship and then in just a few days be yelling crucify him? We're going to get into the scripture here in just a minute, but um, if we can have the ushers come for our offering this morning. I love the kids involved, don't you? Amen. That's our future, by the way. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you that we are tithers and we have tithers' rights. We thank you that you said you'll open up the windows of heaven if we bring our tithe and our offering to you. And you'll rebuke the devourer for our sakes. So, Father, I ask that you would multiply this tithe, this gift that people are giving, and just use it for your kingdom. I ask you would bless the giver and the gift. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And if... To the depths of the sea Creation's revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All its for Israel for it says blessed is the nation who's supporting Israel there is a box um, it'll be this week and next week yet um, if you would like to donate for Israel it's in the back on the way out um, so please you know if you have some extra give it to Israel and then we're going to make sure that gets to where it belongs but we're blessed by blessing Israel that's scriptural okay so this morning, Palm Sunday, Can I, is anybody else amazed that next week's Easter already? Yeah, wow, that's what I say, whoa, I don't know how it came so fast, but it did. Um, so this morning, as you know, in the series that we were doing, the seven places Jesus shed his blood, there was a verse here, a verse there, um, so we weren't reading a bunch of verses, um, but this morning we are back to doing that. Um, so we're going to be in Matthew 21, and as I usually ask you if you would stand in honor of God's word as we read it. 
We're going to be reading the first 11 verses of Matthew 21. It says, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says to you anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king's coming, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him, that's Jesus, on them. And a great multitude spread their clothes on the road, Others cut down branches from trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that your word will not turn, return void, but it will accomplish what you have set forth for to do. So, Father, I pray as we sang in this song, let your hearts be open, all of our hearts, to receive what God has said. I ask you, speak through me, Holy Spirit. It would be none of my words, but what you have for this people today. And we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Well, if you know anything about scriptures, this passage is actually called the triumphal entry. He was entering in triumph on this day. And again, it just totally baffles me that just in a few days, they were, you know, dragging him in to be, you know, crucify him. And, you know, it, it just... The movie, uh, it, I don't know if those of you that were here noticed, I, I struggled for words. It's like, uh, what do you say after that? But listen, it was a good thing. It wasn't good for Jesus, but it's good for us. Because without that, we would not have the forgiveness of sins. All of that was prophesied through the Bible. Um, but today... He rides in on a donkey, and everybody's like, hey, Hosanna, Hosanna. And did you notice at the end, who's this? (laughs) Yeah, they didn't even know who they were were shouting about. Okay, somebody's riding in a donkey. We said, you know, we hear the king's coming. Oh, Hosanna. Wait, who is this guy? They don't even know really who they're worshiping. But I did some digging in this, in, in I I love to dig in the Word. So I looked at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four Gospels tell this story. But you notice they don't tell the same. It's close. But listen, the Word of God is not contradicted. If I ask four or five of you to tell me what you saw at a certain thing, you would all tell me whatever was stuck out to you, what was important to you. It wouldn't be word for word. It wouldn't be identical. You know, me, I'd be like, well, you know, maybe I would say, hey, they were dressed like this. And you would be like, what they have on? You wouldn't even notice that. Okay, I probably, that wouldn't be something I'd notice, but that was just an example. So it's not a contradiction, okay? But I do want to show you the differences in them. Okay, John is actually the only place that actually mentions palm branches. We call this Palm Sunday, and yet only one of those Gospels mentioned palms. The rest do not. Um, And it says they took the palm, or the branches of palm trees, when they heard he was coming, and they went to meet him with the branches. It doesn't say they waved them. Um, 
if they waved them, I should say, or if they laid them. Some of the things we read, like in here, it says, you know, they laid things down on the road when he was coming. And if you've ever, and honestly, even the movie we watched is not perfect, okay? That they have to do things for media. But if you even watch the media versions of Palm Sunday, you see them. They continuously are laying the palm branches down as he's coming through. Something for him to be on rather than the actual ground. But this is also, John is the only gospel that mentions that Jesus found the young donkey. John's gospel does not say he sent his disciples to get the, the donkey or the colt. John says when Jesus found it and he sat on it. So to me, what's it matter except for this? Mark and Luke both say that he sent them for a young colt or a young don a baby donkey, okay? Jesus told them in both passages, if anyone says to you, what are you doing? Just tell them the Lord has need of it. Okay, now I've joked about, you know, Bev's car is not my car. But let's say that I, I sent one of you and said, you know what, go get Bev's car. And if she asks you what you're doing, just tell her the pastor needs it. <laughs> Bev would be like, for what? Doesn't she have her own car? You know, can you imagine? They said, listen, just tell them the Lord has need of it and they'll let it go. It was normal back then for people to borrow animals for high-ranking people. They, this was their king. So it was okay to say, the Lord needs it. They're like, okay, okay, take it. Okay? It also is the only ones that mention that nobody has written on it. Luke says, and nobody's ever ridden on it. A donkey's not like a horse from what I'm gathering. If nobody's ever ridden on a horse, you better look out. Okay, and, I, and I'm not a horse person. Um, my daughter, actually, this one sitting right here, one time rode a horse, and it bucked her off. And it was a tame horse, by the way. I'm not, I'm not a I rode a horse one time. We had a man at a church. Um, he's actually at Kimport now. He brings his animals sometimes. And they strapped me on the horse, and by the time I was done, I was this way. And he's like, what are you doing? I go, I'm not doing anything. The whole thing's tipping. I mean, they had to get me back. That's what I do on a horse, okay? Um, but a donkey, they say, is not like that. So when he said nobody's ever ridden in it, that, that wasn't actually a big deal, okay? Now, um, all but John's Gospels, the Matthew, Mark, and Luke out of the four, say that they put clothes down. I, I don't know unless they took their jackets off or some, I mean, what clothes, I mean, surely they didn't strip down. It doesn't say that, it just says they put their clothes down on the, the path as he was going. It actually says in, the, in the, a lot of them that they put it on the donkey for him to ride on. So he wasn't riding just on the, the back of the donkey. Um, Matthew's gospel tells us that the crowd spread their clothes. So not only did the disciples, it says, put them on the donkey, the crowd put it on the, the road. Matthew also tells us, and we just read it, that they cut branches down. Doesn't say they were palm branches. At least the New King James does not. Um, and I checked a few others. Um, so the Bible is not really contradicting. People might think, oh, it's contradicting itself. It can't be true. No, it's not. It's just what people found to be important that they wrote down. What I find important, you might not. And what you find important, I might not. Okay, we, we pick out what we, we feel is the important things. If you've ever been to a baby shower, they do that thing, okay, and they take the, the mother away and say, okay, now tell us what she was wearing. You know, what? I, I fail at that really badly because that's not important to me. The person is not what they're wearing. Okay, so I never do that right. So you would think, oh, gosh, she must, you know, but it was what was important to them. Okay, now, Palm Sunday. It is called Palm Sunday. But there's a few things in, these pa in this passage and in the Gospels that I want to bring out. Um, three of them, all but John, Jesus told the disciples to go into the village and tells them, as soon as you get there, this is where it will be. He knew exactly where that animal was going to be. That shows 
that Jesus is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He didn't say, well, go in a city and when you find a donkey. He said, this is where you'll find it. He told them very specifically, this is where you'll find it, untie it. It shows that he is omniscient. He's all-knowing. Um, <clears throat> I do find it very funny because all it says all the city was moved. Asking, who is this? Now, I don't know what, about you, but when I'm moved, sometimes it's not a good thing. When I'm moved, sometimes it's like, mm, mm, okay, it, it kind of aggravates me at times. And I'm like, okay, calm down. You know, this disturbed them. I mean, you're, how many, think about this, and, and I'm like at a loss. He's coming in, and everybody's going, Hosanna, Hosanna, throwing the clothes down, you know, so you can ride on. And they're going, wait a minute, who is this? Stop and think about that for a minute. You're, you're Hosanna and shouting somebody that you're like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> who are we even shouting to? And thank you for saying, Marianne, it, 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 this is one thing that is a kind of a pet peeve for me. I've gone to a Steeler game in well, what is it now, AccuSure or whatever stadium. It's still Heinz Stadium. But um, we went when it was Heinz Stadium. And I'm telling you, it's deafening, the screaming and the shouting. And, the, and we come in church and go, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We can't shout. Yes, we can. God says use an instrument. Have you ever seen an instrument? That's one. You know? Um, I said that one time years ago, with, and she... One of my friends was looking at me. She wasn't a believer, and she's like, what? I said, the Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. So why should we not? Okay? So thank you for saying that, because we should be in here worshiping and shouting Hosanna like they were. Because we can do it at a football game, and we don't care who looks at us there. They're like, we're nuts. So why not do it in church? Okay, now... <clears throat> Usually whenever I'm trying to, to, I'm like, okay, Lord, show me what I'm to do with a message. What do you want me to tell the people? And I'll usually put on, you know, during like several days, I'll listen to worship music because it kind of gets me into that, you know, worshipful state. Or I'll put on a message and listen to, you know, what other people are, are preaching. And sometimes I'm like, nope, that, nope, turn that one off. Well, I happened to turn on a message, and I wasn't sure I was going to mention this, but I, I'm, I feel I am. I listened to a message by Rick Sodmont, <clears throat> okay, who is on streets of gold at this point, you know. Um, but Rick preached a message about, and he said, this may be the last message I ever preach, and it was. But he made statements that really struck out to me. I mean, they, they just pierce me. Palm Sunday is the time right before Jesus' death. Jesus had prophesied that he was going to die. That was one of the things that they portrayed in the movie. Oh, you said, you know, that, you know, take this temple and we'll, you'll raise it up in three days. Yeah, right. Go ahead. You can't even get yourself off that cross. Because they didn't understand. But can you imagine the disciples walking with Jesus and hearing, listen, it's better that I go. And, and you know, there's a time coming. And, and I can hear them going, no, pff, I don't know what he's talking about, but he ain't leaving. He's not dying. First off, he was only in his low 30s. How could he be dying? He can't be dying. What do you mean he's dying? But you know Why? And, and Rick made this statement. He said, this is not a proud statement. You don't want people to die. He said, people don't want him to die because it benefits your life if I don't. And when he first said that, I'm like, that's a little arrogant, don't you think? And then I happened to think. And he says, listen, I don't want you to die either because you benefit my life. They didn't want Jesus to die because it benefited them. That they didn't understand it would be a better benefit when he died. It benefited them while he was alive with them. They walked with him. They went with him. They didn't want him to die because it was a benefit to them.
You know, we don't want people. I should put it this way. We like people in our lives because it does benefit us. And that's, that's not an arrogant statement. I had to really stop and think about that. You benefit my life in some way, and I benefit yours in some way. That's why it's called a body, because I need my two arms, my two legs, my ears, my eyes, because we're all part of that body. Okay, so I want to go to Luke 9, because I want you to understand what Jesus was facing and what you should be facing. Luke 9, 23 and 20 to 26 says this. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me. Now, do you, first off, let me stop right there. Do you desire to come after Jesus? Do you want to be his follower? Let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily, your cross, and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, not just anything, but for Jesus' sake, will save it. What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is destroyed or lost himself? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and in his fathers, and of the holy angels. I don't want him to be ashamed of me. And I'm not ashamed of him. <clears throat> but let me read what the New Living says. He said, then he said to the crowd, if anyone wants to be my follower, we always say I'm a follower of Jesus, you must give up your own way. We just studied that today in um, Daniel. You know, the king wanted his own way. He says, you must give that up. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give it up, for my sake, you'll save it. And what benefit, again, does it gain if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me or my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns to his glory and the glory of the Father. Here's something that, that just pierced me in Rick's message. He said, if a person's death causes you to lose faith, maybe your faith isn't directed where it should be. And here was the example he was given. If I live, I win. But if I die, I win. Doesn't change it. He said, but if I live, I get to continue to share Jesus. If he lives, that's a win. He said, I believe God spoke to me that I'm going to live, prophetically. He said, but if I don't, which we all know he did not, he passed away. He said, are you going to stop believing in the prophetic word? Because I missed it just once. Now, I want you to think hard about that. We miss it sometimes. But does that going to mean that you're going to give up and not trust God? He said, listen, what about the other hundred that I got right? <laughs> what if I miss this one? We miss it at times. But that doesn't mean we give up and we don't believe in it anymore. You know, as we enter into, this is what we call Holy Week. This is where Jesus was worshipped. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna. Then they're going to say crucify him. They just beat him beyond and he goes to the cross. We read in the scripture, if you want to be my follower... You can't have your own way. You, you just can't. It's God's way. And believe me, there's times, and, and you know, now I have one of my children here, so she can, she can testify to that. 
There's times I want it my own way. See, my husband's even agreeing with him. <laughs> but listen, then I have to remember, listen, it's not Patty's will. It's God's will. And I have to say, listen, God, I really would prefer it this way, but I'll do it your way. And listen, there's times I've missed it. There's times I've said to somebody, and I, and I truly believe it was a word, and it didn't happen. Now, I mean, we're not deceased yet, so it could. But that doesn't stop my faith. It doesn't stop my faith when things don't go my way. When the world is in the turmoil it's in. It's not changing my faith. Because listen, if I live, I win. Because I'm going to give, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And that's preach and teach the word of God. And love his kids. But if I die, I really win. <laughs> listen, we're coming into where it says, oh, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? We should not be like, oh, I don't want to die. I'll be honest with you. There's days where I'm like, Lord, come on. And then I think, wait, wait, wait. We need more time. There's people I love dearly that aren't. If, if we go today, they're probably not going. So wait, wait. You know, give us time to get to, you know, <laughs> preach and teach the word and share Jesus so that our loved ones and our, and let me put it this, our enemies come to Jesus. Because if you didn't get anything out of that movie, listen, love them. I'm going to tell you, you are going to start seeing people, and I know this, that I know this, that I know this, and they asked me Wednesday, is it a prophetic word? No, it's a vision God gave me. They're going to come through those doors out there. They're not going to look like you. They're not going to act like you. They're not going to smell like you. Because they're go it's going to be the world trying to come in this house. And you know what? When they hit that door, and I did this kind of as a funny, when they hit the first door, if they don't get delivered, they will when they come through that one. And I'm telling you, that's a vision God gave me, and I'm here to tell you, I had a phone call this week that confirmed it. And that person had no clue God gave me that vision. They're coming. Thank you. And we have to be ready. And here's my question to you. Are you going to love them or are you going to be like, mm, I ain't sitting by them? Because listen, judging them and treating them poorly is never going to get them in the kingdom. You don't have to agree with them, but you do have to love them. And they're coming. I'm telling you, they're coming. Yeah, I just heard today, we want to clean the fish before we catch them. And, and the, the person I was watching doing this going, how are you going to clean a live fish? Wait, stand still. You can't. You catch them and let God clean them. It's not my job to clean them. It's the Holy Spirit's job. And I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to preach and teach the word and let God do with it. I'll do my job. He'll do his. You know? But as we reflect, I really, I seriously, I challenge you. Reflect on your life. Look at your life. Look in a mirror. And ask yourself, am I doing what God's called me to do? Am I being who God's called me to be? Because God has a calling on each and every one of your lives. He honestly does. And listen, not everybody stands up here. Not everyone does, you know... God bless you people that do children. I, I, I used to be in the nursery at Kimport years and years ago. That's not my calling. <laughs> I love kids, but that is not my calling. I know that. You need to know where an evangelist is not my calling. Thank God, my buddy, it is his calling. He's not meant to be here. He's meant to be out there because it's not mine. Years ago, I thought I was supposed to be a worship person. I was actually told that. You should be, are you the worship leader? I said, no. They said, you should be. No, I shouldn't. Because praise God, you guys are. And Zach, thank you. I love a, man, a male voice. I don't know about you guys. 
but to listen to Zach lead and the harmony and your wife, goodness sakes, the harmony. I'm a music person, so music's important to me. To, to do what you're called to do. Listen, it's okay, you know, if, if I'm a music person and sing, you know, here, there, wherever, but I'm, I'm not to be a worship person. God didn't call me for that. God didn't call me to be the person who would do whatever. He called you. And we need to reflect on that this week. Look, I'm serious. Look in the mirror and say, God, am I the person you've created me to be or am I going my own way? Like it said, if you want to be my follower, you can't be doing your own thing. We have to do what we have to do for God and his way. That's what Jesus said. In that movie, he's like, God, I'm ready. Father, your will. And he carried his cross, his own cross. I don't know how. But Good Friday, and, and I urge you all to come, please invite people. Um, because we're going to take time. We're going to have communion that night. It's going to be a little bit different of a service. Because I want you to think about what it is that you have that God's saying, let go. He says here, take up your cross daily. What do you have to let go in order to pick up your cross? What do you need crucified in order to follow Jesus? I had to crucify my own way. There's been things throughout my life that I'm like, ow, that doesn't feel good. God's like, it's not supposed to. Because we have to crucify what isn't of him. So I want you to reflect this week. What do you need to crucify this week? And then Friday, we're going to put it on the cross. And not only are we going to put it there, we're going to leave it there. Too many people want to take it back. I did that for a while. I loved the kite string thing. Okay, I gave it to God. Now I can reel it back in. And God said, no, let go of it. We're here to lay down our lives. I, I've heard something a while ago that just like blew my, in a sense, my theology out the window. But then it really started to make sense. Who put Jesus on the cross or what put Jesus on the cross? You and your sin? I heard something over here. Wait, somebody said actually what? Jesus put Jesus on the cross. He said, I laid down my life. Nobody took it. He took our sins on the cross, but he put himself up there. And at first I thought, what? I was like you. Nope, my sin put him up there. Nope. He put himself up there. He didn't have to go. He said, I laid down my life. Nobody took it. I gave it. And I'm like, wow. He willingly put himself up there for me. That speaks loud. It, it does to me anyway. He willingly laid down his life for you and for me. Despite the things that maybe we don't have quite right. That was hard for me. But I want to go to Philippians 1, 27. <clears throat> because here's what we need to truly understand. The first word really catches me, only. That means nothing else. Only. Let your conduct be worthy of the gospel. So whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I hear of your affairs. That you stand fast in one spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Here's what the New Living says. Above all, 
you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel or the good news about Jesus. Then whether I come and see you again or I only hear of you, I know you're standing together with one spirit, one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. This is telling us that only, nothing else, only are our lives to be worthy of the gospel. That's the only thing we're supposed to be worthy of. So is your life the way you're living it worthy only of the gospel? If somebody sees you, do they see Jesus? I don't know who it was, if it was somebody in here or not, said that they were loving somebody, just loving on them, and said, because you, it was somebody. It was Wednesday night somebody told me that story. You may be the only Jesus they're ever, the only, that they're going to hear. Your life and how you conduct it may be the only sermon they're ever going to hear. I had, um, years and years ago, decades now, that sounds really bad, makes me feel old, but decades ago, um, we were in what was called lay speaking. So some of you will remember the term lay speaking. Um, it's in a denomination where you go and you take classes and then you can fill pulpits. One, you can fill your own, and then if you keep going, you can fill other den that same denomination pulpit. And a man had me come and fill his pulpit, and his last name was Shepherd. And he said, I'm the other shepherd. Um, but he taught us the class, and he said, I'm going to give you a gift. It's called my silent sermon. It's still hanging in my house. It's three empty crosses. <clears throat> because, listen, he's not on there anymore. They took him down. I like the portrayal of the movie where they, they lowered him down off of that cross. He's not there anymore. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father, always interceding for us. Yeah, thank you, Lord. But I want you to see verse 28 through 30. Did I give you that one, Amy? Okay. Um, and I told her to do, I think this is the one I told her to do in New Living. Um, it says, do not or don't be intimidated in any way by your enemy. When I was in high school, I had a, kid, a girl that always, you know, made fun of me for being, a, you know, a churchgoer and didn't party like the rest of them. One, I wasn't allowed, but, you know, I, I was a church person, so it just didn't feel right to me. And years later, and I'm talking years later, I was going into a grocery store, and she was coming out of that grocery store. And she's like, I'm one of you, I'm one of you, did you hear? And I'm like, one of me What? And she was so excited to tell me that she had gotten saved. The very And she goes, I used to make fun of you, and now I am one of you. And I'm like, hallelujah. You know? <laughs> but don't be intimidated by the way your enemy is going to treat you. Because trust me, they're your enemy for a reason. They're not going to go, oh, it's so nice that you go to church. They're going to make fun of you. Okay? It says that will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed. But you're going to be saved, even by God himself. For you have been given not only the privilege, catch that word, it's a privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege, <laughs> I, I was hoping somebody would react to that, the privilege of suffering for him. <laughs> but I don't want to suffer, God, it's not fun, it hurts. It's a privilege. Listen, he sacrificed his body for you. Are you willing to sacrifice for him? It's a privilege to suffer for him. It says we're all in this struggle together. Listen, I don't get it right all the time. You're not going to get it. That's why we're not perfect. There was only one perfect, and he went to the cross. So we're in this together. And some days it's a struggle. He says, you've seen my struggle in the past, and you know that I'm still in the midst of it. 
Yeah, we're in the midst of a struggle. But we're in it together. When I'm up, you might be down. When you're down, I might be up. It says that we're to encourage each other. But you know what it also says? Encourage yourself in the Lord. How do you do that? Put on some worship music. If you're a music person like me, that, that does it. I love worship music, so I'm like, Ooh, okay. You know, I, I, was holding, I, I was out of breath. I said to my husband, I don't know how I'm going to get up and preach this morning. <laughs> I, I was holding, holding the little one here. And I'm like jiggling around. I wanted to run, but I thought, eh, that, that's not safety with her um, or me. <laughs> but listen, that, I love that song. How can I keep it inside? If you know what God has done, loving you and sending Jesus, and then if you didn't watch The Passion of the Christ, watch it. I know people here that said, man, I got to turn away. I can't watch them get beat. I'm sitting there going like this, trying to, you know, squint and watch it, but yet not watch it. It's heart-wrenching what he did for me. But you need to watch it. You need to see what Jesus went through. And he did it willingly. Yeah, and I don't think that does portray what he did. It just, he went through all of that because he loves me. Because he loves you. He loves your enemies. He loves the vilest of sinner. And he died on that cross for them as much as me. He died on that cross for those coming through that back door. No matter if they're addicted to drugs, alcohol, you know, pornography, maybe they're prostitutes, who knows. But we're going to love them when they come through that door. Because they're coming. So prepare yourself. <laughs> they're coming. You know, but in closing, I want you to know something. Serving the Lord comes with a cost. And in that cost, and this is something Rick said, I will not give Satan any credit. He said, listen, if I die, he's not getting credit for taking my life. I'm not giving him any credit. Scripture tells us that he will come. No weapon formed. That means it's, it comes. It says then at the end, but it will not prosper. But it comes. He will try to bring schemes against you. He will try to do, uh, he'll try to do anything. The biggest thing he's going to try to do is make you quit, to keep you quiet. <clears throat> How can I keep it inside? It's a privilege to serve the Lord and to do his will not ours. We're here to encourage each other in faith, build one another up in love because we're stronger together. The Bible says a three-strand cord is a whole lot harder to break. One, you can snap it pretty quick. Two, yeah, you can probably do a little bit. It'll take a little effort, but three, the more of us that stand together, the harder the enemy will have. So I go, and this is why I didn't know. And if you want to see it, you can see my things. I said, so may our prayer be as the psalm says. Create in me a clean heart. You sang that. And I did not know that. Create in me a clean heart. And I, and I love it, Mimi, every time I pray that in, when we're in prayer, and she always finishes it for me, <laughs> and renew a right spirit within me, a right spirit. We need to be following Jesus, and wholeheartedly. 
So again, in closing, I ask that you this week search yourself out. I'm going to be searching myself in prayer and saying, God, what do I need to give up? What do I need you to, to prune from me? Read the scripture. You get pruned if you produce fruit and you get pruned and cut if you don't. It doesn't matter either. I mean, it does matter, but you're getting cut either way. One's getting cut down, the other one's getting pruned. Because if, you, if you're a gardener, I'm not that great. You have to prune stuff for it to grow better. So even if you produce fruit, he says you're going to be pruned. What is it in your life that needs pruned today? And as you come Friday, you're going to be getting a piece of paper to put to that cross. What is it in your life that you need to prune out and ask Jesus to take from you? And there are things sometimes it's like, God, but I don't want that pruned out. I kind of like that. And he's like, nope, it's got to go. And listen, it might not even be a bad thing. But if it's taking up the room for Jesus, then it's got to go. Like I preach Christmas Eve, we need to have room, make room for him in our hearts. So what is it that's taking room that he's saying, I want that room? I want that space. Okay? So search yourself out this week, and we'll come back on Friday. Well, we'll be here Tuesday. By the way, we will not be here Wednesday because it is Holy Week. We're not doing Bible study. Um, but we'll be here Tuesday. Friday, the church will be open from 12 to 3 for you to come. And just if you want to come and reflect and spend some time in the, in the house of God and, um, you know, pray, worship, whatever you want to do. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll come back and be prepared to put your little whatever it is that you need to nail to the cross. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I thank you that we have to take up our cross daily because we can't have it our own way. And Lord, there's times where as humans, we want it our way. I know there's times I've wanted it my way. But God, let your will be done, not my will, like Jesus prayed. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it pierces our hearts. God, and I ask that you would prune us. Prune me for the things that are not of you, that I need trimmed up so that it can grow more fruit. And Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you that you are working. I thank you that they're coming, Lord. They're coming. We will give you glory and honor and praise, and we will love them, and they will be delivered and set free, set free by your Holy Spirit. And we give you glory and honor for your word. I thank you that ears and hearts are open to receive it this morning. Father, I ask that you would put a hedge of protection around us all as we go our ways. Give us a blessed day, and we will give you the glory for it. We thank you so much in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.